Hi everyone, my name is Jamie Prickett, CEO of Xperia Financial Group, and I am here with the great Raza Beg. Uh, Raza and his wife Imrana joined Xperia a little over a year ago, and within their first six months, they became the first ever six-figure ring earners. You see his nice, beautiful ring on his finger there. Uh, they became the first ever ring earners in Xperia USA, and they they hail, hail from uh, Dallas, Texas, yep. and uh, Raza made a trip in today's first time at the corporate head office. I said, we gotta have an interview. So Raza, first of all, welcome and appreciate you being here today. Thank you, man. It's, uh, it's, uh, it was a dream to kind of visit the corporate and uh, it just kind of happened suddenly and I'm here, I'm so excited. It's awesome, man, it's awesome. So for new people watching this, um, you came in with a lot of experience in the industry, but you still had to start from scratch, right? It wasn't like you had boatload of client lists to call, prospects to call. What what did you do? What did you focus on your first few months to get the ball rolling, to be able to cross six figures in such a short period of time? Yeah, so, you know, in the industry, if you're in the industry, uh, you know that, you know, there's a certain contracts and regulations and there's also ethics and integrity, right? So obviously when I was, when I found Xperia, um, I was at another company uh, doing fairly well, successful, and I had a team, I had uh, um, uh, over about 80 agents in there. And um, I basically had to decide to leave that company, Core Turkey. At the same time, ethically, I didn't, I didn't take, uh, invite any of my team members to come follow me uh, because I, I knew the owner and I respected him. I don't want to you know, create bad blood, yep. right? Uh, they say never burn bridges if you can avoid them. So I did that, and so when I came to Xperia, uh, I started from scratch. Yeah, no clients, no no agents. Uh, it was one person at a time, one new client at a time, and um, and it was it, it just it, it was a lot of hard work. And the first thing I did, obviously, was to the goal was to replace my income. So I started producing right away, right off the bat. And Xperia has an amazing system of what's called the field training program. And I love that because I come from an industry where you they tell you, hey, go buy leads, spend 1500 bucks a week on leads, and that's your clients, and then you go and you sell them. And it's a transactional type of a, a sale, and you never really build a relationship with the clients. It's just a one, one a run and gun, one, one sale, and then you're on to the next client. Um, here at Experia, what I found was during the whole COVID pandemic, the company was still growing uh, exponentially and I was like what are they doing different that's different from what I'm used to uh, for the last 15 years in the industry and I found out I realized that they they don't have any lead system they don't buy leads it's all organic word-of-mouth referral marketing and they have a training wheel a training system that you work with a trainer till you are ready to do the same thing the trainer is doing and during that time, you're earning and learning at the same time. So that was, I really was impressed by that. And I took that and I made it in my system. Yep. And that's that's how I I hit six figures uh, in within five months, you know, qualified as in six months uh, by January. So June till about January, uh, in yeah. December, yeah. Yep. And I know that um, when you talk about field training, some people might not know what that is. Many do, but it's where you're bringing on a new person, correct? Yep, correct. That needs to go into a market. So typically it's their market their to market. learn the business. And sometimes they were licensed. You were training them with correct. some field sales with them. Yep. Other times they weren't licensed and correct. they wanted to get a, a fast track promotion that we correct. have. Correct. That's all you did in the beginning. That's all I did. That's wow. all I did. I just used the system and my schedule was uh, completely booked because uh, the people that we were uh, bringing on, introducing them to an opportunity, they were very excited because they did not have to be the expert. And that's the one thing that uh, I come from the, the ballroom dance world where I, I was used to that concept because I always had a coach. So if you have, are you coming from ath athletics, sports teams, uh, any kind of uh, you know, martial arts, you, you always are trained that there's a coach you always work with. And so, so people who are brought in, they have had some experience with that. And they love the idea that there's somebody who's going to hold their hands through the learning process and they don't have to be the expert. They just book the appointment and then the expert steps in and they present the whole thing for them. So wow. 
that was that's I just followed what Expedia had already. So would you say that your system was essentially, I'm going to build a team of greenies, some were experienced coming in, but I'm going to build a team of greenies and then I'm going to start training them right away? Yeah. So how did you get the greenies, the new <clears throat> so, folks to the business? So again, it's it's uh, it's the three foot rule, right? I mean, I, uh, if you've been in the industry a long time or you're new to the industry, and if, I was new to the industry, so I tell people, don't prejudge people. You know, they don't need to be licensed professionals. I was a ballroom dancer, right? So no, and nothing close to uh, doing financial services or insurance. And uh, so I was an artist and I kind of transformed into this, but I saw the money potential. I saw the leverage potential because what happened to me was I was competing. I was uh, making trading time for money. I was teaching a lesson. I would get paid. I was teaching a lesson, got paid. I competed at competitions. I got paid at endorsements. And then boom, out of nowhere, I had a heart situation happen, right? I, I, I could not dance anymore. So I started really paying attention to what can I do that I can use my brain and I can not have to use physical body to kind of be able to trade time for money and leverage that time, right? So that's when I, I, I realized that the financial services that was introduced to me will replace my income. And that's what it did. Wow. So, so the three foot rule is pretty much anyone within three feet of you. Yeah. Have a conversation. Hey, Have how you doing? What and, are you doing? And now it's even easier because they look at me and they say, hey, what is this ring? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. this ring. Yeah, it's kind of heavy. But, you know, I have to, uh, this, th that's what I do. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, even my, my cousin uh, asked, hey, what is that ring? Explain to me. And so I started explaining to her. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, uh, yeah. So everybody don't prejudge, right? Um, it changed my, uh, my dynasty's uh, projectile, where I'm headed. So don't prejudge. Uh, the first gentleman who introduced me to this industry was my student at the studio. And I'm thankful to him uh, that he did. And I'm uh, and so don't prejudge. I was doing seven figures a year in my my dance industry, and somebody could have just said or prejudged me and say, "Oh, he doesn't need this, right?" Because no. he's already successful. successful. Yep. And but they didn't know internally what was going on that I was uh, basically had a heart condition. I could not keep my studios open. I basically had a white elephant that I'd feed, and. Nobody, and you know, you don't know it. Yeah. You know, when you're successful, you got to act like, okay, oh, things sure. are still going great, right? Yeah. yeah. And so don't prejudge. I mean, people who are successful, things change, right? Yeah. Approach everybody and let them decide. Let let me decide if I want to do this, right? And and you've also had a lot of success and some of the folks on your team using social media as well. Yeah. So now what we do is our predominant focus in our team is uh, branding, social media presence, because uh, there's a concept called omnipresence, uh, which means that be everywhere, right? Omnipresence is be everywhere. Meaning that if you brand yourself, you're everywhere. When your contacts need that service, they know it's you. Right. You're the only one that can help them because you are everywhere and that builds credibility. And do you think some people, when it comes to social media, because what I found is that some people will get excited for a minute, right. they'll post something online, and then they don't have the floodgates open up. They don't have everyone calling them. Exactly. So they think it doesn't work. Yeah. Have you found from experience that doing it consistently over a long period of time, someone comes out of the woodworks that has known you for years and says, hey, I've been seeing your stuff lately. Hey, I saw you posting this for the last year. Yeah. Yeah. Have you found that to be true? Yeah. So it's the concept. The social media marketing is a concept of how you, you grow bamboo. Right. I don't know if you know the bamboo farmer waters bamboo for four years before the first little leaf sprouts out from the ground. I didn't know that. Okay. So he knows that once he has a bamboo tree, he has a valuable asset, right? So social media marketing uh, is the same way. You have to keep uh, planting the seed, keep planting seed. It's a farmer's mindset, right? You farm, you put the seed, you let it grow, you water it. You, you don't see the, the, the mangoes right away. But you know, you know that if you plant enough uh, seed, you water it enough times, you are consistent. You know, you will get the results from it. So a lot yeah. of people give up. It's a it's a three feet from the goal, right? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That book, and um, if they don't get 
immediate gratification. So we are in a in a in a world of microwave mindset. Yeah. Uh, you put it in 30 seconds, you got your coffee hot, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guy who planted the beans took years to build, you know, months yeah. to make that bean grow, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we want the coffee to be hot right away, right? And right. it's ready. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so consistency. Yeah. Is the key. Awesome. So going back to when you joined Xperia, because you came from having big success already in the industry, yeah. right? Even prior to having about 80 agents with the company or with there, you had several hundred with another organization where you kind of... Yeah, over 500. I had over 500, 500 licensed, licensed agents. Licensed professionals, which it took like about four or five years to grow. Wow. But um, yeah, it was uh, great. Uh, unfortunately, when I got to the top and found out and realized that the uh, I didn't own any of my agents, my book of business, and the owner was selling the company out mm. from under us. And obviously that exposed the fact that we didn't own it. Right. Right. So when if the owner didn't own it anymore after they sell it, how can we own it? Right. So that's mm. a lot of misunderstanding in the industry. A lot of these uh, agents are in a company which they are getting bought out. And I asked them a question like, hey, if your CEO sold his shares, and his company, how can how can you own it? Right. Because somebody else owns it besides your CEO. Yeah. He's on a salary now. Yeah. So how can you own it, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's tricky. Yeah, I've had these same conversations with many people in the U.S. Um, so when you came to us, or I guess we came to you through Jacques, through Jacques, Jacques, yeah. Jacques and Meredith Vaughn, yeah. who you'd known for many years. Yeah. When we sat down for the first time, I remember sitting with you. You know, you sat down with another one of our leaders, yeah. Darren Golka. What three things stood out to you the most about Xperia and why this was going to be a place that you're willing to cut ties with a place where you're already making money, yep. you already had some success? What made you come over? What were maybe three key points? <clears throat> so one of the things uh, was definitely um, the legacy ownership plan that uh, Xperia has. Um, because of my uh, heart condition, I knew that I need to have something stable for my family. I have a five-year-old, a 12-year-old. Uh, 15 year old and so I wanted something to be um, set in place to where if God forbid something happens to me uh, there's still income coming in from what I did right the seeds I planted the farming I've done the the trees that grow out of that it still can feed my family and my kids and I have been in uh, I, or known of multiple IMOs in the in the United States and I really looked at this Canadian company Experian Financial Group that was coming to the US. And the biggest thing was the legacy ownership plan, which is incredible. I call it the infinite infinite generational residual income, yeah. which does not exist in any other program. Uh, Tesla, Microsoft, any corporation, technology industry, any company out there, leave alone even just the financial industry. That was the number one thing. The second thing was, um, no matter how you look at it, for somebody who's kind of a minority like me, I look at how I'm treated in a company, right? And one of the things I noticed in Xperia was the second most important thing was diversity. The company has uh, an amazing diverse culture of uh, acceptance of all, you know, religion, cultures, uh, where you're from, it doesn't matter. Uh, you could be a rock star, a superstar speaker at another company, but you can only speak at an Xperia conference if you are on the leaderboard, yeah. which was like <laughs> impressive to me. Um, one of the things when I when I came on, remember there was a conference happening, yeah. And I called Jamie. I said, like, "Hey, you know, if, if you need somebody to kind of you know fill in, you know, I can I can I can speak. I've got a lot of trading, you know, powerpoints." He's like, "Get on the leaderboard first. I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> all right, man." <laughs> so. That was really impressive to me because I knew that, okay, if I put in the work and I hit the leaderboard, I'm not going to get cut out because some rock star showed up just now, yeah. right? Because there's always somebody better than you, right? Yeah. But if you do the work, uh, that was a big thing, yeah. you know? So, and then the integrity and ethics of you and Leanne, man, that was, uh, it was, it was shocking to me because I didn't experience that before. Yeah. So simple thing was when, when I was getting my ring, uh, it was funny, but I didn't want to, I wanted to be the first one, right? And I don't want anybody else to kind of pass me. So I, I, I was at, I think, 99,000 
seven hundred dollars. Yeah, it was January first week, right, of two thousand twenty-two, and I called James. Hey, man, I have like forty thousand in the pipeline, and I want to. Can you can we announce the ring this week? Because I don't want anybody else to pass me by. Because I don't know what the whole company was. And Jamie's like, uh, I said, man, it's only three hundred bucks. I can kind of wire you three hundred. He's like, you know, you, you know, it's like three hundred bucks. Like it's it's easy, right? He's like, no, Roz, let's wait for next week's paycheck. I'm like, damn, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that that told me that you know the integrity and ethics you have and Leanne have. It's 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 if I went through that, then you know I'm not going to be pushed over by him. Well, yeah. Other people are coming in, yeah. Because a lot of favoritism happens in companies. Yeah. You know, it does. It's human nature. If you don't have the right ethics, you know, you can kind of, yeah. you know, do favors for other people and yeah. and not really give the right person who deserves it. Yeah. But man, that was that was impressive. So this these are things that happened to me personally just within the last one year. Experiences that showed me the integrity and the the ethics of the company. So that was yeah. huge. You know? And and for us, a lot of that, and I appreciate you saying that, uh, Raza, but a lot of it is just setting standards. You know, I feel yeah. like we're in a world today where standards are just getting lower and lower. And I want to keep high standards. I want standards of professionalism and ex- excellence. And, and you know, and it's, it's funny because I think basically what you said is you joined us because I was a jerk. I, I, I wouldn't let you. I wouldn't let you speak, and I wouldn't give you the ring early. Man, <laughs> but but really, tough love works. You, know? you sometimes, right? And um, you know, I think it's just that standard of excellence that we want. You know, I I, I was with the company for ten years myself, right. as you know, in the industry, right. where people were paraded around the stage and rah rah and high fives, and I'm all for that, but not when they're all broke. Yeah, like I, I was broke. And I'm being paraded and I'm speaking and it's like, I'm talking out of my rear end here. Like I, I haven't had big success, but here I am telling people how to have big success. So right. that's been one of the kind of the, the, the themes of our conventions or anything, yeah. even doing these interviews. Yeah. I want to sh- showcase interviews of people who are actually doing it. Yeah. Not people who did it once upon a time or people right. that are thinking about doing it one day, yeah. but people that are actually doing it like yourself. So yeah. um, Raza, you're in Dallas, Texas. Yes, sir. How many states are you in right now in your, your business, your team? We are in about 15 states. 15 states yeah. now. Awesome. Yeah. And what's your goal over the next, let's say over the next 12 months in your organization, where would you like to see your business be at? So right now we're at about uh, 200 agents. Okay. Um, and how many licensed of those? Licensed are about uh, 40. 40 licensed? 40, okay. 45, yeah. Yep. And uh, there's a lot of them that are still going through the process of studying and trying to pass the test. Um, my personal goal is uh, to be at about um, 2,000 in in four years. Yeah. In, in my agency. License? Direct to me. License. License agents. agents right? nice. That's my goal. To In four years, I want to have 2,000 licensed direct to my base shop, right? And in my organization, uh, in the next 12 months, um, my my target is to have about a 1,000 License or non-license. Yeah, in, thousand in total. Thousand yeah, totals, honest. and then we can maybe flush out, you know, twenty percent of them to kind of yep. get to be licensed, and then get the ten percent of those really affected, right? Yeah. Yep. So there's a lot of people uh, uh, lose the statistics of the industry, right? There's a certain statistic. If you want a team, uh, if you want uh, one good recruit, you need to kind of talk to ten people. Yeah. Or recruit ten people. And one will flush out to be because it's a ten percent rule. Yeah. That in any any industry, if you're doing sales, marketing, uh, and you're doing uh, client acquisitions, it's a ten to twenty percent stats, right? So if you want to build a um, two hundred man solid license agents, you need to have thousand people in your team. Yeah. I you have, and yeah. we've seen that to be true, right? From when we had twelve people right. to now that we have twenty two hundred licensed. Yeah. We've seen that to be true. There's always that 80-20 rule. Yeah. And you know, we we find that as leaders, we want to change that rule. I wish, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's been the rule since the beginning of time. You're always gonna have 20% of your uh, uh of your sales force, organization, employees, whatever it is, doing 80% of the work, 80% doing 20% of the work. Yeah. Yeah. And and the way that we combat that in our business is we just get more people and then we're gonna have more of the 20 percenters making the big money, helping the most families. Yep. But the 80 percenters, what I love about our model, Raz, and you'll yep. probably agree with me, is that the 80 percenters that 
maybe one day could be 20 percenters, but they're not right now, yeah. can still make some great part-time income. Yeah. Right. They yeah. can, st- some of them, even a full-time income, they can still have success. And, and I love that. So one of the things I, I, I think that Xperior is going to change those percentages. Like I predict the, the Pareto's law is going to be broken at Xperior. Okay. <laughs> because I think with our uh, field training concept, that, that the shift is going to happen because what happens in the traditional system uh, people are just, they get their license, they, they, it's a, they're shown the training and they watch some videos and they're like given a pat on the back and say, okay, great job. Now go and get it, Tiger. And they're left on their own. Yeah. And I feel like our training wheel program that anybody in our team, again, the 10, the 10% right now that accept to be in the training wheel, they are going to have success. Yeah. Right. So I have many agents that actually do participate, say, yeah, I want to be in the training wheel program. They will only fail if they don't show up, right? Because the trainer is doing all the work. Yeah. They're closing the deal. They are, they're putting money in your pocket. They're putting money in their own pocket. So the, nobody's failing. Yeah. If you can then learn that and duplicate that with your new team, yeah. we will change that percentage. Yeah. I right. believe that. The other thing is maturity in the business because right. right now we have not so much maturity in the business as we have been growing organically from the beginning. Sure, we brought experienced folks over like yourself, sure. but because of our retention, because we're not having a revolving door where exactly. people are joining and quitting, joining and quitting, they're joining and sticking around and becoming more competent over the months and years as they as they progress in the business. So. No, that's true. Uh, and uh, for any licensed professional that are out there and you are in companies that you feel you're in the right place. Um, you have to really understand the the long play, right? The long play is: Do you have ethics, integrity? Do you have a comp plan that you own? Do you have a contractual document that tells you you own the company, or yeah. you own a piece of the company, or you own at least your business? A lot of the licensed professionals that I speak to, a lot of them are my friends also, yeah. and they're, they're brainwashed to, to believe that they own stuff, mm-hmm. but they don't. It's almost like your companies are saying, hey, you don't rent this house. You own it. You know, just pay for it for 30 years. And after 30 years, when you paid it off, we're going to give you the deed of the contract. You know, and if you ask them, show me my name on the deed, they're like, well, no, you have to first get there, pay off the house, and then we'll give you the deed, right? That is what you're doing right now. Yeah. Instead of at Xperia, one of the things I did was, one of the things you did was, I asked for the contract. I said, hey, can I look at the ownership, the share contract? And Jimmy's like, yeah, one second, and boom. He emailed me the, the, the shares contract. I'm like, whoa, mm-hmm. I have never seen that. Even after I achieved a really successful position in my first company, um, they're like, oh no, you know, once you get to XYZ level, then the CEO is going to sit down with you one-on-one and he's going to sit down with his attorney and show you that. And that did not exist. It, it never happened. And it was all promises. So yeah. for licensed professionals who are looking at Xperior, I would recommend ask your existing company, hey, can I see a contract where I can run it by my attorney and, and let them know and see if I own this or not. Yeah. And if that doesn't happen, Check us out. Yep. <laughs> and, and I would and I would also say, Raza, to add to that, we're not talking about ownership of your clients because most people that work with an IMO own their clients. Own the, right. We're talking ownership of an agency. And just because someone has the title agency owner, that doesn't mean they own the agency. Exactly. And from our experience, we've seen that nobody out there has real true agency ownership. And that's where we're making a big difference. Yep. Um, any last things you want to say before we wrap this up? Man, I would just say thank you very much for uh, creating Xperia and having the vision of where you're headed because uh, I, I wanted to tie my ship to something that is going to be as big as Xperia is. And we will help you get it to a billion uh, dollars a company uh, and even more. I feel, I predict that in ten, five, ten years, it'll be like the t- $10 billion, $20 billion company yeah. uh, because expen- exponential growth is unstoppable, you know, so 
So, uh, thank you for yeah doing this, and um, I'm so happy to be here. Well, I appreciate it, man. And we yeah, wouldn't thanks. be able to do it with, without people like you and Imrana. This wouldn't be possible. So thanks, man. thank you, thanks. and thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you. Hey, if you like this video or any of the other videos that I have on my channel, stay tuned. We have so many more coming, but I want to make sure that you're in the know, that you know when they're coming. So please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and make sure you hit the notification bell.